man, I feel like a woman. Viewer discretion is advised. Your fave will be criticized. That's Jan. That's Chris. And welcome to CCTV, the nonstop pop show. And today we'll be discussing the crossover pop classic, Man, I Feel Like a Woman. Looking for an awesome global pop music podcast? Well, Shan and I have the inside scoop with extensive experience performing on stage and working at record labels. We review and deep dive into your favorite artist songs and careers and also interview music industry professionals, including artists, producers, choreographers, and everything in between. So come join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash cctvpops and become a part of our amazing crew, which includes Lisette, Lily, Emily, Kevin, and Juliet. Subscribe now and let's explore the world of pop music together. Yes. So if you are new here or if you're an old fan, <laughs> welcome. This is our new segment called Pop Perfection. And this segment is where we're going to break down the biggest hits in pop music, analyze their impact, and give our unfiltered opinions on the songs and the artists. Today, we are focusing on Shania Twain and the amazing timeless song, <laughs> Man, I Feel Like a Woman. Um, but before we get into the song, let's just get a little quick look into what led up to that song. So how did she get started? So before Shania Twain became Shania Twain, the queen of country pop, Eileen Regina Edwards lived in an impoverished life in Ontario, Canada. Shania's early career involved performing in small venues and local festivals, as well as doing backup vocals for other artists. And finally, she released her self-titled debut album in 1993 under Mercury Records, which featured several successful singles in Canada, including What Made You Say That and Dance With The One That Brought You. What made you say that? Was it the moonlight? Was it the starlight in the What made you say that? Have you been listening to your heart? The album only reached number 67 on the U.S. Country Albums Chart, but it gained positive reviews from the critics. So, mm -hmm. Chris, have you heard this country album? I had never heard the whole album, but I mm. have heard the singles just because I have gone back through Shania Twain's discography before. And, but yeah, I don't really know it well. I have no connection to it, um, but it is right. interesting listening to it retrospectively after you kind of know where she ended up going. Right. Um, because she these songs aren't bad, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, they're not even close. They don't even touch the stuff that she did later on. But honestly, the yeah. thing that stands out the most is just how beautiful her voice is. Like, it's mm -hmm. such a beautiful tone. It's so recognizable. It's super yeah. pure, very emotive. Like, even with some of these lyrics, like, they're very happy songs, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And um, on kind of first look, they may not seem very deep, but she makes every word very important, the way she mm. sings. Um, right. So, yeah, I think they're catchy. Um, the lyrics are well written, but yeah, obviously she took it to a whole other level after that. But yeah, how about you? Um, well, my family comes from the hickiest, the hickiest hick hick part of the South. So I've heard some of these songs, but honestly, it all sounded the same to me and my kid brain. Like, I, yeah, <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me in my head. I mean, um, so I agree with you in terms of like her vocal uh, ability and the way she, her delivery of songs really stand out she has mm -hmm. a strong voice and i think for a canadian making country music that's usually like it's birthplaces in america i think it's interesting how influenced she was right and um i love that you can hear her personality in her voice right um she has cited herself as being like a she has called herself excuse me as like a tomboy you can kind of hear that because a lot of the country singers are very like pretty and almost not flitty in their vocals but you know they always come very high and they sing up here with a little bit of twang or whatever. But it was nice to kind of hear a rasp in her voice. Um, so I think that's what was interesting about her. And at the time, I, I remember Reba McIntyre being huge. My aunt loves Reba. Mm. Reba McIntyre was queen at the time, you know. Um, and Faith Hill had come out at this around the same time, too, in 1993. So you have Faith Hill, this kind of like all-American, literally all-American blonde woman singing country, and then Shania. So it's like interesting. So this whole project actually just falls right into traditional country but does it set her apart from like reba and then fate I couldn't really say that mm -mm. no not at all well <laughs> in 1995 shania released her second album the woman in me which features the hit singles whose bed have your boots been under and any man of mine and the album was produced and co-written by her then husband 
Robert John Mutt Lange, uh, and it peaked at number five on the Billboard and became a number one diamond selling album, establishing Shania as a major country artist. Whose bed have your boots been under? Whose heart did you see? So obviously this partnership with her husband was successful and they came together again to work on the third album, Come On Over, which was released in 1997. And this album has become a legendary success story, selling over 40 million copies worldwide and earning numerous accolades. And among its 12 singles, which is crazy because there's only 16 songs on the album, <laughs> yeah. Man, I Feel Like a Woman, which I believe was the seventh or eighth single, depending on how you look at the releases, emerged as the crossover hit that helped to define the album's popularity. And although Man, I Feel Like a Woman was initially released to country radio stations, its soaring popularity soon led to its release to mainstream audience across the globe. The song climbed the charts in multiple countries, including the U.S., U.K., Australia, and various Asian markets. The song won a Grammy Award for Best Female Country Vocal Performance and has since become a timeless hit that continues to resonate with people of all ages and genders. Man, I Feel Like a Woman was actually initially intended to be a rock song for a male artist, but Shania heard their amazing riff, took the track, and recorded it herself. She rewrote the lyrics from a female perspective, creating a lively and upbeat track about her desire to break free from the constraints and limitations she felt as a woman in the male-dominated country music industry. Let's get into this song and analyze this track because it is... I mean, even if, we, even if we we didn't say it was a hit, it's a hit. You can totally mm. hear it. I mean, that first guitar riff, it's like iconic. And then the whole, let's go, girls. Like, come on. Let's go, girls. What, let's go where? Where are we going? And she took us to so many different places. Like, her delivery is very bluesy. A lot of blues singers just have that kind of, like, conversational kind of thing going on. And it was different because she's just adding a little bit of flair with her ow, ow, and her, you know, her, her breath, yes. her breaks. Um, I, I think it's interesting because it has rock, it has pop, and then you get these high-pitched, twangy old guitars that then bring it back into country. So then you're like, oh, wait, this is a country song. Yeah. Um, I think this is really interesting because of the, the approach to her lyrics and the singing make it feel like she's, like, just strutting her stuff and not singing about the typical country stuff. No offense, but country does have a pretty... Uh, stereotypical or like a cliche where it's love, being a small town girl, uh, an unfaithful partner, losing love. And then maybe you get like a story here or there, like if you're like a Dolly Parton fan, with The Bridge, right? Something like that. But she was kind of just like talking about how amazing it was to be a woman, right? And not feeling like her presence is a distraction. And that chorus is perfect. The love oh, is perfect for like a ride in a convertible. <laughs> you can leave your worries behind. And the song is big and bold without being too cheesy. And I think that's what's really important. People think like that anthemic songs have to be like this really like, oh God, I've heard some like woman anthems or like rosé all day crowd songs. I'm just like, oh my God, please make it stop. Like this song is stadium ready and shopping friendly. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yes. It's the perfect kind of blend. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah, it's interesting because obviously the whole album, the intention mm. was to kind of get Shania out of just the country market and get her globally commercial, right? right. Um, and this song encapsulates that intention so perfectly because like you mentioned, it is at its heart a rock song, but it has the pop hooks and sensibility and it has that soul of country music mm -hmm. without the cheesiness of the lyrics. Um, and yes, there are still the steel guitars and she does sing with a little bit of a twang very naturally. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not too much. It's just enough to still appeal to country radio while still yes. being accessible for the other radio uh, formats. So, yeah, just brilliant mm -hmm. in that way. Um, 
And yeah, many list this song as just one of the best songs of all time. And honestly, if you ever hear it out, like people will instantly light up. So I think most of the yeah. world would pretty much agree with that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just so many great hooks. Like the, it's so memorable and easy to sing mm -hmm. along to before the song is even over. Like yeah. you listen to it for the first time, like you can kind of know what's coming already. So it's just brilliant just mm -hmm. as a pop song. Um, and mm -hmm. the mixing is really, really good. It's all yeah. live instruments. Um, yeah. And everything feels like it's in, it's performed with a lot of intention. There's a lot of energy. Like yeah. the drums feel like they're being hit hard. Like the guitars feel like the yeah. person is like really like feeling it. Um, the harmonica, same thing. Like it's all just really, really well done. Um, mm -hmm. And again, vocally, oh my, her tone is just insane. And she makes some really great choices within it. Like there's just enough sass without yeah. it being again too cheesy there's just enough of a push without her seeming to be trying too hard there's yeah. moments of rasp there's some vocal breaks in there all the yeah. ad libs and the woos and stuff they sound very fun they're not too rehearsed or planned yeah. they don't at least they might have been but they don't feel that way yeah. so it just feels fun like it's just perfect this song oh like, yeah totally no i love faults. her little yeah, i love her little like uh her southern hoots <laughs> Like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like again, it's like, oh my god, my yeah. family doesn't partake too much in it. But <laughs> if you've seen any kind of like, whoa, it's true. It's very true to her. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't sound like you know, like too much like Michael Jackson going, ha, 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 you know, <laughs> like, you know. So it's fun. <laughs> and you're right. What you were saying about the the instrumentation of it was in, it's it's intentional. And then mm -hmm. you watch the live performances. I remember watching some of these YouTube clips of her performing it and like. Miami and yeah. top of the pops and all these random places, not random, but like you know, all these yeah, places. Yeah, just everywhere around the world. <laughs> Literally. Um, and the band in the back are enjoying it. Yeah. They're all men too. So you have like you have this band with you sitting there. Oh, what? Oh, totally crazy. <laughs> Literally, not like singing their little hearts out, but yeah. harmonizing with her. I mean, I think I think Mutt is actually the harmon it's harmonizing with her on the track mm -hmm. as well. So it's her and him. So it makes sense that the, the the backing vocals are men when she's performing, but you can see them; they're enjoying it. And even her iconic Grammy performance, they're wearing Ooh. outfit from the video, and the guys are back there sitting there, totally crazy, <laughs> <laughs> like it's amazing. Um, but yeah, speaking of the music video, mm -hmm. uh, the music video is another iconic uh, mm -hmm. clip that we all know, and it's so interesting because it's like everything was, as you said, intentional purposeful not just oh this accidentally happened it was this is what i want and let's make it happen really well well executed and it was inspired by robert palmer's music video for his 80s hit addicted to love and of course that's iconic on its own right mm -hmm. <laughs> and it features styling by mark bauer and in the beginning shania dons an equestrian uh, inspired top hat and long coat gradually removing articles of clothing I'm trying to unzip <laughs> my sweater <laughs> she's removing articles of clothing until she's left in a mini dress and thigh high boots. And all the while, she's surrounded by men dressed in PVC and mesh. With Very a lot of makeup on. Oh, God, with a lot of makeup. That was yes. great, you know? Yes. To make um, them androgynous, like, it's awesome. Um, I remember this video so well. Like, I was an older kid at this point, and this song was everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. impossible to avoid. Like, I can picture that music video Mm -hmm. for the rest of my life even if i never see it again <laughs> you know what i mean like it's it's ingrained i think mm -hmm. in my brain and i appreciate it so much more now because of course back then as a kid i didn't really think much about like what she was trying to say with mm -hmm. it and kind of the boundaries that she was pushing mm -hmm. at the time right but especially now a days where music videos tend to be kind of the absolute most especially because we review k-pop as well yeah. where like every scene is is just it's, it's overwhelming this video is so simple and so effective. You get one scene. Yeah. Yep. And yep. it relies on her to really just be her charismatic pop star self to like yeah. keep your attention, um, yeah. which is absolutely brilliant. Like this is what you call star quality, right? Yeah. Like she doesn't yeah. need to do much. She does a little eyebrow raise. She does a little smirk here and it's all extremely captivating. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah, I think that's brilliant. I love how awkward the men look in the band as well. Like, they're clearly <laughs> models that are not used to movement. Yes. And so they can't even do a two-step. Um, but their awkwardness juxtaposes her confidence mm -hmm. even more. Yeah. So it's brilliant. Like, they're pretty men, but, like, they're clearly, like, not holding a candle to her. 
No, they're useless. Yeah, like, you know? yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. Sorry. As human beings, you matter. But in this video, honey, you don't because she is stealing <laughs> the seeds. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't remember this video at all from my childhood personally because I think I was a little too young. But yeah, um, I do remember it from um, a VH1 best of playlist. Like, you know, VH1 used to do all those like best the of countdowns. the 90s. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, they used to hold it, have it on lock, right? Um, before all the love and hip hops and stuff. But um, yeah, back in the day, I remember seeing it and even maybe hearing the song in some movies, maybe. But I saw the play, the, the play, her come up on like a the countdown and I thought, wow, she is so pretty. Oh my God. Mm. She's so pretty. Beautiful. Like, that's what got me. I was like, holy smokes. Now, granted, she is very talented, but we all have eyes to see. And my eyes saw just, just stunning quality and it's just confident. And she's wearing all black. And I was just like, what is it about it? And everyone was saying so many good things about this video. They were like, she was just, she was just so gorgeous. She's so talented. And they all started singing, oh, ah, oh. And I'm like, what song is this? So that's my earliest memory with this video. But looking at it, I mean, if you know Addicted to Love, you know that this, they, they, listen, women and music videos, no matter what the race, no matter what the genre, we are meant to be objectified. So to have that role reversal switched up, have the men in the mesh with their man boobs all out, honey, we love a good peck. A little bit good pictorial <laughs> uh, that's uh, exposed to the public. And, and it's interesting because with country, you don't get that. And exactly. that's why this was even more iconic. Because not only are you using a video that objectified women with a very similar, not very similar, but with a similar kind of guitar riff that people recognize, but you're kind of turning country on its head. It's very male dominated, very much like a woman should know her place, very down home Bible belt mentality going on. And she was like, no. I want to look good and I want to sit there and flaunt everything I got, but she didn't actually do that until at the very end. And I think that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, that whole silhouette and for her to kind of peel everything off and then bam, she's wearing this mini skirt saying, I feel like a bomb. You Girl, go off. Um, and I think this video was considered like by some worry warts and some people in her creative camp as being too sexy or risque. But I'm so mm. glad that um, Mark Bauer worked with her. I mean, she's worked with so many um, uh, gays and, and um, LGBTQ people. And when she was in Canada, even when she was doing her like her side gigs, she had cited them as people she would spend time with. So she was open to that. Um, so I think it's great that Mark decided to kind of push it a little bit and, and, and have her peel off those layers and have all this feminine, quote unquote, feminine silhouette. And then even in her later, latter half of her career, you see all these Crazy costumes, crazy hair, her midriff, some cleavage, uh, CGI in a country video. Mm -hmm. Like, this is why she's the queen of country pop, right? And it really set her apart. He, his styling for her really set her apart in this era. 12, mm -hmm. 12 videos, 12 singles for six, for, 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 this, for this era is a lot. And for him to style them and make her look like that, I'm here for it. And Brilliant. She, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yes. So as you mentioned, Shania was criticized for the song being too pop and her outfits being provocative and outrageous. And it was too couture for the country folk. And many believed <laughs> that the song was too much and wouldn't be relatable for women at the time. But of course, those people were wrong. <laughs> yes. Yes. It wasn't just relatable to women. It was a song that went beyond a female empowerment anthem. Man, I feel like a woman has been embraced by many in the LGBTQ plus community as an empowering and liberating expression of self-identity and individuality. And it has also been used in various LGBTQ plus events and celebrations, including pride parades and other events that celebrate diversity and inclusion. And amazingly, Shania revealed in her autobiography that the lyrics for man were inspired of her days, by her days, excuse me, of partying with a lot of drag queens and she moved to Toronto at 18 years old. So like I mentioned, she's she's about this life, y'all. She's been about it. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's amazing. Like that's such a rare thing for a country artist to be so open about mm -hmm. embracing the LGBTQIA plus community. You know, mm -hmm. it's for a lot of country music fans, they come from a lot of places that are still very conservative. So for her to yeah. be so open about it throughout her whole career, even starting, you know, in the 90s, that's pretty amazing. And it really is groundbreaking. Um, so, sure. yeah, really awesome to have her represent and, and have a, be a voice for that community in kind of a, a harder industry, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I mm -hmm. think she is. I think it goes to her being born in Canada, you know, mm. 
Uh, apparently she was in, impoverished and then her, she lost her parents at a very young age. So she became like essentially like a pseudo mother to her younger sibling. But when you're forced to grow really fast and you're forced to kind of make a living for yourself, you go places like the city. You don't stay in a small town because you need to make a living. You, 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 she worked out on a resort, I think, uh, even. And she mm-hmm. had to meet new people on the regular. So I think her upbringing definitely helped her kind of find a different path and different mm-hmm. influences that just manifested as all this pop perfection <laughs> that we're discussing today. <laughs> so since the release of the track in 1999, Shania has solidified herself, as you mentioned, as the queen of country pop and <laughs> is one of the best-selling artists of all time. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, so that being said, the impact of her song goes on a higher level with even artists, not just country artists. Um, Rina Sawayama, if you're not familiar, we do have a pop 101 on Rina Sawayama, but she's a Brit pop artist who is making waves here um, in the U.S. as well. She mm-hmm. has a song called This Hell, which actually discusses the topic of being an LGBTQ plus member. Also is a country pop rock song that was kind of made in the same vein of man and it's interesting because she has little nods to it like let's go girls or wow that's hot when you think of like um that don't impress me much like songs like that so shania's influence is definitely there i mean um drag queens perform it like it's it's yeah ubiquitous at this point right (laughs) yes exactly i definitely went down the shania hole after prepping for this episode earlier this week um i have to shout out her new album is actually very good so definitely Mm. go check that out But yeah, as you mentioned, Shania has been a huge influence for so many artists, many of which are my favorite artists. And you Mm -hmm. mentioned Rena, like at the concert that I went to in L.A., she performed You're Still the One as the cover that night. And the second the concert ended, she played Man, I Feel Like a Woman at the end, very loud for everyone. And everyone stayed and just danced to it. Like it was such an awesome way to end that concert. Did that not happen at yours? I don't remember. I think we all ran oh. up and we were all like, ah, but I don't Oh, she- yeah. No, everyone stayed to party to Man, I Feel Like a Woman. No, that did yeah. not happen. And we got a different, we got like a different like album track from her. You got that Shania. Yeah, everyone gets Hello. a different cover, I think. that. But yeah, yeah, we were very lucky. We got some Shania that night. What? Um, But yeah, and also we interviewed Steve Anderson. He's a music director and he sometimes does the playlists before concerts. And the mm-hmm. song he mentioned as the one that was a never miss to get audiences excited was man i feel like a woman to play you know at these as during these should. pre-concert playlists so yeah it's just amazing what this song can do and shows the power of music yeah as you mentioned like straight men love it yeah. you know old men love it young girls love it like mm-hmm. you know it's literally for everyone it's like impossible to hate this song i've never met anyone who doesn't like the song and if they do we don't trust them we send them back to space where they came from <laughs> Well, you know, this is so much fun to talk about. And usually we do deeper dives into artists on our shows with our pop 101s, as I've mentioned, where we go into the whole discography of the artists. And we talk about album reviews and such. But if we get some requests, we would love to do a full album review or maybe a pop 101. So let us know in the comments below. Or you can subscribe and join our Patreon, where our CCTV crew producers get to choose our episodes and get top priority. All right, so be sure to check that out at patreon.com slash CCTV Pops. Yes, definitely. All right, so that wraps up this episode of Pop Perfection. Hope you guys like this segment and let us know what other songs you'd like to see featured on it next. As Shan mentioned, you can hang out with us and the crew over on Patreon. And you can also, of course, comment below or message us at CCTV Pops on social media. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for our YouTube channel. And if you're enjoying the show on a podcast platform, please give us a follow, rating, and review. Until next time, that's Shan. That's Chris. And we're signing off from CCTV, the nonstop pop show. (laughs) 